Squares and circles are all well and good, but have you ever wished you could render a cat pic in the browser in a crinkly bad shape? Or maybe a flower? Or even a heart? I know I sure have. Stay tuned and I'll spill the beans on how it's possible to display your images inside any shape you like using SVGs, HTML, CSS and optionally SimpleJS. First off, I want to thank Jay Tompkins for his awesome article which inspired this video. I'll link to this down below and also CSS tricks for bringing it to my attention. So definitely go and check both of those out, after this video of course. Now let's take a quick look at what we're going to build. You'll see here that I'm displaying this lovely pic of my cat Pumpkin in this bad shape on page load. When you hover on it, it changes to this flower, and when you click, it changes to this heart. There are also these buttons, which you can use to select the one you want to use. To build this, the first thing we need to do is find the shapes we want for our frames. I use Icon Monster for this, which I'll link to below. You can use any site which provides SVGs or you can make your own if you know how. You want to choose a shape which has a fairly big surface area and no holes in the middle. So for example, this bed probably wouldn't be too good because it's too narrow. And unfortunately, this cat wouldn't look right either because it's not one solid surface. This badge, on the other hand, is perfect. So I'll download that. And also this flower shape and my heart. When you have the SVGs you want to use, you next need to resize them to the size you want them to appear on the page. You need to do this because it's not possible to make the clip path property responsive. So that's why you need to choose the size you want them to show on the page. To resize them, you need to use a program which allows you to export elements as SVGs. I've gone for the free version of Figma. So to resize them, I start by importing them into my Figma file and then just drag them to the size I want. You can also use these boxes. And I'll do that for the other two as well. And then export the shapes as SVGs and drag them into my project. If we then click into one of the SVG files, we'll see various attributes giving us information about it. We're going to use this dpath. This is the attribute which defines the path to be drawn around the SVG, so in other words, the border. The cleanest way to add these to our CSS is to first set up some custom properties or variables to store them. So I'll go into my root element and set up a variable called badge, and then copy and paste the D attribute into that. And then I'll do the same for flower and heart. And now I can actually remove the SVG files from my project because we have everything we need saved into the CSS. To add the frame, I'll need a div with a class of frame with my image inside of it. So my source is pumpkin.png and Alt equals black and white cat. And you'll see I've already horizontally and vertically centered this using Flexbox. Next up, I'll style the frame with a height and width which matches my SVGs and add position relative. And then to set the frame on page load, I just need to add clip path and then path and add my variable. That has not worked, and the reason is I'm missing a couple of semicolons on here. And actually, I've also missed out a dash there. And woohoo, now it has worked. To change the frame to the flower on hover is fairly simple. I just need to add it to my frame hover selector. And for good measure, I'll do it for focus as well for the people who are tabbing. So I might as well just copy this and Swap out badge for flower, give that a go, woohoo. And I'm also going to add cursor pointer so people know that they can interact with it. And now we can chop and change just by hovering on the image. How awesome is that? To change the frame to the heart on click, I need to use JS. I'll start by adding an ID onto my frame. You could target the class, but I've heard recently that it's a good idea to use IDs for everything to do with your JS and classes for everything to do with your CSS. So I'm sticking to that for now. It seems to be working pretty well. So now I will save that as a variable in my JavaScript. So const frame equals document dot get element by ID and frame. And then add an event listener to that. So frame 
dot add event listener and I'm listening for the click and when that happens I'm going to run a function which I'll call change frame so I'll now declare that function function change frame and then I'll tell it what I want it to do which is toggle the class list of heart on and off but currently that class doesn't exist so I need to add it which I'll do here and then just copy this and switch out flower for heart and that should work and it does not work and if we console log our frame we will see that it is in fact adding the heart class the problem is when we click we also hovered over it and that's taking precedence so if I move the cursor out you'll see the heart is in fact there to get around that we just simply add the clip path heart property to our hearts hover and focus state as well. We will now see our lovely heart frame appearing on click and I can remove my debugging console log. Lovely. Also, because we've used the dot toggle method, it goes back to the flower if we click it again. But what if we wanted to choose our frame with buttons? Totally doable. We'll start by adding our buttons in the HTML. I'm going to put them in a container. And then I'll give them all a generic BTN class for styling, which I added earlier, and IDs, which reflect the shape of the frame they're going to add. So this one will be badge. We'll write badge in the button itself. And then we need a flower button and a heart button. Oh, I need to close my container. And here they are. And I wrote the button styles earlier, so I'll just copy and paste those in and actually I realise I want them inside my main container so they're nicely styled. So now I'm going to grab each button by its ID just like we did before so I'm going to need three of those so I need const I think badge btn is pretty sensible let's do flower btn and heart actually for clarity's sake I think it's probably best to add btn into the IDs on my HTML. It wouldn't matter in this project, but it's good practice anyway. So, badge BTN, flower BTN, and of course, heart BTN. And then, just to be sure this is working, go to console.log badge BTN. See what that comes up with. You'll see it is indeed grabbing my badge BTN button. Good news. And then each one needs an event listener to listen for the click. So I can just copy the variable names here and they are all going to run a function I will write called select frame. Now we need to declare our function. So I'll do function select frame. I need to tell it to look at the button and then tell it which options it's looking at. Button ID equals this, i.e. the button dot ID. Then just to test that out, I'll do console.log button ID. And you'll see it is picking out the IDs on the buttons. Now, because I have three options to choose from, badge, flower, and heart, I think it makes sense to do a switch statement. If you only had two, you could do an if else or a ternary. And my switch statement looks like this. Switch, and then it's choosing from button IDs. And in the case that it's badge btn, I want it to add a class name of just frame, this is because the frame class already has our badge clip path. Now for the flower, I want it to add the class of flower. Let's just check that's working. Good to go. And then finally, I need to add my heart. And you can see I can now select my frame by clicking the buttons. Which brings to my attention that we don't actually need these properties on frame because if you use the flower and the heart, they still work without defining the height and width. This is because this picture has actually been resized to 300 pixels, but if I were to swap it for a bigger picture, that would begin to cause issues. So just watch out for that. And if you find that you're having problems with the alternate frames, you can also declare that height and width on the modifier classes as well. But it doesn't seem to be necessary for my project, so I'll leave it as it is. If you're wondering why I didn't use frame.classlist.add, that's a very good question. The problem with that approach is that it works fine on the initial clicks, but you'll see that it cannot revert back to a previous frame if you click that button. This is because we're simply adding new classes and not removing the old ones. So it just renders the one which is furthest down in the CSS, which is my heart. So if I put it back to dot class name, what that's doing 
is saying that the only class on the frame should be these names. Now this works great with the buttons, but you'll see that problems arise when I want to go back to using on hover because we have told it, in fact, that the only class should be hard. So we've now removed the frame, which obviously we don't want. So we should add frame before the flower and heart. And now we can click through nicely, but we can also go back to our original functionality of clicking and hover. Well, that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments which videos you'd like to see next. Thanks for watching and please consider subscribing if you'd like to see more videos about CSS oddities and odysseys from me. See you next time.